Kaylee Allison from Starliner Music. Welcome to my channel. Today in fingerboard geometry, we'll be covering caged diminished triads. First, we'll look at some fingerings and then we'll do some exercises. Here we go. I hope you enjoy it. I'd just like to mention before I get into the caged diminished triad fingerings that the formula for the diminished triad root flat three and flat five creates a bit of a fingering issue. The flat five tends to make the arpeggio spread a little wider than most of the other caged type arpeggios. One of the great things about the caged system is that the arpeggios tend to be compact and positional. The flat five tends to spread the arpeggios out a little wider than most of the other caged arpeggios. Therefore, I have provided an alternate fingering that can help compact them. You will notice with the on-screen diagrams, I have shown the flat five oftentimes with a square. The square is the alternate description of how to finger the arpeggio. I will also cover alternates in this video, but you might find them useful uh, specifically either with the triad or when dealing with the seventh chord versions of diminished arpeggios. Those would be the minor seven flat five, otherwise known as half diminished, or the fully diminished seventh arpeggio. Let's go on to the fingerings for root D. All right, here we go with caged diminished arpeggio fingerings. I'm starting with root D and we'll be using the C form first. So the C form octave looks like this. Keep in mind those notes are D. So this is D diminished. Starting on the flat five, that's A flat. So flat five, root D, flat three F, flat five A flat, root D, flat 3F and flat 5A flat. Now let's look at an alternate fingering. So I'm going to move one of the flat fives over. Still starting the same way though. Flat five, root, minor third. I'm gonna put the flat five on the same string here. And then I'm going to skip a string to the D. That's the root, minor third, and the flat five. Now the A shaped D diminished arpeggio. The octave pattern is in an A shape, but these notes are D. Uh, the arpeggio pattern looks like this. Starts with the flat five, then the root, minor third, flat five, root, minor third, and the flat five. And for the alternate fingering, we'll start the same way. Flat five, root, minor third, flat five, root, minor third, and then we'll place the flat five on the second string, the same string as the minor third, and then there, there aren't any positional notes right here on the first string. Then we move on to the G form of the arpeggio. So again, these are Ds, D, D, and D. That's my octave pattern, and then the arpeggio is root, minor third, flat five, root, minor third, flat five, and root. The alternate fingering, root, minor third, flat five is going to be on the same string here. And then we'll skip a string, root, minor third, flat five, and the root. On to the E pattern for the root D. Here's the octave shape. And the arpeggio looks like this. Root, minor third, flat five, root, minor third, flat five, root, minor third. Here we go with the last pattern. This is the D pattern of D diminished. Here's the octave shape. And we're going to start at the low minor third F. So that's minor third, flat five, root, minor third, flat five, root, and minor third. For the alternate fingering, we'll place the low minor third F and the low flat five A flat on the sixth string. So 
there's the low minor third, here is the 16th fret, and we have the low flat five, and then we'll skip a string to the octave, uh, or the root here, D, on the D string, and then we'll come up the arpeggio as we did before, minor third, flat five, root, and flat three. Now, let's try a different root. Now let's look at caged diminished arpeggios on the root A. I'm going to start with A diminished in the G pattern. Here's the octave shape. And here's the arpeggio. And the alternate. to the E shape. Here is the octave shape, and here's the A diminished arpeggio. Here's an alternate fingering. Let's move to the D pattern of A diminished. There's my octave, and here's the arpeggio. And an alternate fingering. C shape of A diminished. And here's the arpeggio. And the alternate fingering. And finally, the A pattern of A diminished. Here's the octave. And the alternate fingering. Now, let's go on to the exercises. All right, for the exercises, we'll be playing caged, diminished arpeggios through the circle of fourths. If you're not sure what the circle of fourths is, please check out my video on the circle of fourths. I have given the order of that circle on screen here so you can follow it. Uh, the circle of fourths usually starts with C and we'll be using all five caged patterns uh, going across the fingerboard here. For the C pattern, we'll start at C. I have to use one of the modified patterns here to accommodate uh, kind of running into the nut. Uh, so this is the alternate pattern, starting on the flat five. Notice I'm putting the minor third and the flat five on the same string here, and then I skip a string up to the octave C, minor third and flat five there. Then I go on to the A shape for C. There's my octave shape, and this is the A pattern for C diminished. Then the G pattern. Then the E pattern. Then the D pattern. Then I've chosen to just demonstrate the typical fingering for the C form now that I'm not running into an open string situation. So it would normally be fingered like this, root minor third fifth, and then root minor third and fifth, and I mean flat five in this case because it's diminished. All right, let's get a look at the exercises.
That's it for Caged Diminished Triads. I'm Kimberly Allison from Starliner Music, and I hope to see you back on my channel soon. Thank you.